Good evening, guys. Today we're going to talk about lysosomal storage diseases. Now, in order to understand what's happening in these diseases, it's good to think about that cell trying to digest stuff. Now, what happens? Cell phagocytosis, some uh, stuff, it goes into an endosome. Then, theoretically, that endosome combines with some enzymes and chops whatever is inside the endosome into little pieces. And that's what normally happens over and over again. But where some enzymes are missing, Various products can be digested and they begin to accumulate within the cell. And the cell begins to get huge. Like I drew it smaller here, but imagine a, tel a cell 10 times the size. And it begins to accumulate vacuoles of whatever is it's unable to digest. Now, the three main diseases to think about here are Neiman pig, Gouchers, and Tay Sachs. And we're going to talk about them today as well as almost storage diseases we can distinguish by concentrating on two symptoms CNS symptoms and hepatosplenomegaly. And if you have one of these symptoms or both of these symptoms, it's a good chart to think about if you think you're dealing with a lysosomal storage disease. Now, how do these charts help you? Well, you have two regular uh, diseases and one disease that's loopy, weird. So we're going to begin with a weird one because those are easier to remember. Tay-Sachs is loopy because it has world membranes. And it's also loopy because it's only one where the enzyme doesn't match the substrate that it works on. Here you have sphingomyelin, sphingomyelinase. Glucocerebrosite, glucocerebrosidase. Here you have GM2 gangliosite and hexosaminidase. What? It doesn't match. It's weird. So that's why we work on uh, this one first. Now what I want you to think about with this disease is that the next step is GM3. That's what we're trying to make out of the substance. But we can't do it because we're missing this enzyme. And this person is going to have CNS symptom but no hepatosplenomegaly. Again, the key word will be world membranes. Now if they ask you where, what happened to this patient, how did they get this, the way we're going to think about it is we're going to write one dollar. And one dollar because it's loopy. That's why we write a weird symbol for the second one instead of uh, the other ones. And so one dollar, why? Because it looks like 15. And this is found in chromosome 15. That's the autosomal recessive disorder that causes tay -Sachs. All these conditions are autosomal recessive. Now, if we're talking about Neiman pick, you have phagomyelin, which accumulates because the enzyme that breaks it down is deficient. In all these charts, what you're going to see is you're going to see that the substrate builds up because the enzyme that works on it is deficient. Again, here you have the enzyme is deficient. So the substrate, sphingomyelin, is going to build up. Now the reason we have it written in blue, red, blue, red, blue, red is because of zebra bodies and because Neiman pick has both blue CNS symptoms and red hepatosplenomegaly symptoms. For Neiman pick, we want to think of chromosome 11. And see sphingo? Think of a finger. Think of sphingomyelin. Neiman pick has two fingers in his nose. Chromosome 11. That's how we remember this one. Now the last disease, gouchers. It's all red because it's just hepatosplenomegaly. No CNS symptoms. And also no cherry spot red macula, which you have with both Neiman pick and tay -Sachs. So if you have hepatosplenomegaly and the, none of these other signs, I want you to think about number one. It's chromosome 1 is where this disease is found. And Gouchers, G, the capital G. Glucocerebrosite, it's a G disease. That's why the G is so prominent here. Everything here begins with a G, except for the keyword, crumpled tissue paper. I hope this video helps you guys with these diseases. Good luck in your biochemistry.